House of the Dragon is an American fantasy drama television series, an independent prequel to Game of Thrones from 2011 to 2019, and is the second show in the franchise created by George R. R. Martin and Ryan Condor for HBO. Based on parts of the novel Fire and Blood, the series is set about 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones, and 172 years before the birth of Daenerys Targaryen. Descendant of the eponymous royal house, and 100 years after the seven kingdoms are united by the Targaryen conquest. Featuring an ensemble cast, the show portrays the beginning of the end of the House Targaryen, the events leading up to the covering of the Targaryen War of Succession, known as the Dance of the Dragons. House of the Dragon received a straight-to-series order in October 2019, with casting beginning in July 2020, and principal photography starting in April 2021 in the United Kingdom. The series premiered on August 21, 2022, with the first season consisting of 10 episodes. Five days after its premiere, the series was renewed for a second season. The first season received highly positive reviews, with praise towards its character development, writing, score and performances, particularly from Constantine Smith, D'Arcy, Alcock and Cook. However, the pacing, specifically the time jumps and the lighting of some scenes, were criticised. The series was premiered and watched by over 10 million viewers across the linear channels and HBO Max on its first day, the biggest in HBO history. In 2015, with Game of Thrones still in production, HBO executives approached a Song of Fire and Ice writer George R. R. Martin regarding a possible successor or spin-offs to the series. In November 2018, Martin stated that a potential spin-off series would be solidly based on the material of Fire and Blood. Game of Thrones creators David Benoff and D.B. Weiss stated that they wanted to move on from the franchise and declined involvement in the subsequent projects. By September 2019, a Game of Thrones prequel series for Martin and Ryan Condor that tracks the beginning and the end of House Targaryen was close to receiving a pilot order from HBO. In 2016, Condor pitched the idea for the series based on Martin's tales of Dunk and Egg, however HBO initially passed on it. Inspiration for the series came from the English medieval history and the anarchy of the war of succession between the king's nephew Stephen in England and the king's only surviving child, a daughter, who had fled to Normandy in the 12th century. Author Martin was also involved in the pre-production, providing input on storylines and reviewed scripts and rough cuts. There were some changes, however, from the novels. In the novels, members of the House Valerian are generally described as having silver gold hair, pale skin and violet eyes. However, the showrunners wanted to introduce more racial diversity with its casting. Game of Thrones was criticised for lacking a diverse cast, including cultural stereotypes. As a result, House Valerian are portrayed as black in the television series. According to Condor, Martin, while writing the novels, considered making the Valerians a house of black aristocrats who travelled Restoros from culturally diverse area of Valeria. Despite the initial fan criticism of the ethnicity change, publications and commentators stated it helped distinguish between the large amount of characters between the two families. Fire and Blood is written in the style of a history book, authored by an in-universe fictional historian studying the Targaryen dynasty and various civil conflicts. The novels of A Song on Fire and Ice are however more immersive, with each chapter written in a third-person limited perspective from an immediate point of view of a character. As a result, some of the accounts of events recorded in Fire and Blood are second-hand narrations that are potentially speculative or distorted, therefore making the narrator unreliable from the reader's perspective. In an effort to make the story more clear for viewers, the show writers decided to portray the book events in chronological order from a third-person perspective. Their overall production budget for the first season of House of Dragon was nearly $200 million, which equates to under $20 million per episode. In comparison, the parent series Game of Thrones cost around $100 million per season, beginning with a nearly $6 million per episode from seasons 1 to 5, and around $10 million for every episode in seasons 6 and 7, and up to $15 million in each episode in its 8th and final season, earning $285 million in profits per season over its 8 seasons. The marketing budget, according to Deadline Hollywood, was in excess of $100 million, comparable to the market budget for the tentpole theatrical film. The cast includes Paddy Constantine as King Viserys of the first Targaryen. The fifth king of the Seven Kingdoms, known as the warm, kind and decent man, Viserys was chosen by the Council of Lords to succeed his grandfather, King Jaehaerys I of Targaryen, as king. Viserys is the firstborn son of King Jaehaerys, the second son, Prince Balian Targaryen, and his sister's wife, Princess Alicia Targaryen. Matt Smith is Prince Damian Targaryen, the younger brother of King Viserys, and uncle and husband of Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen. Known as the Rogue Prince for his unpredictable behaviour, Damian is also a fierce warrior and wields the Valyrian steel sword Dark Sister. He is an experienced dragon rider who rides the dragon Caraxes, also known as Bloodworm. Emma de Arcy as Princess, a later Queen Rhaenyra Targaryen, King Viserys Targaryen's daughter and heir apparent, the firstborn and only surviving child of Viserys and his first wife, Queen Amir Arryn. She was praised as the realm's delight during her youth. She is crowned queen by her supporters, the Blacks, after her half-brother usurped the throne. She is a dragon rider who rides the dragon, Cyrax. 
Millie Alcock portrays the young Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen. Rhys Evans as Sir Otto Hightower, Queen Alicent's father and Hand of the King to, to King Viserys, the small council, and continues to hold his position under King Aegon II of Targaryen. When his daughter Alicent becomes queen, he begins plotting to put her eldest son Aegon on the Iron Throne instead of Rhaenyra. Steve Toussaint as Lord Corollus of Valeron, the Lord of Driftmark and the head of House Valeron, one of the wealthiest and most powerful families in the Seven Kingdoms, known as the Sea Snake, he's the most famous seafarer in Westerosi history. He best as Princess Rhaenyra's Targaryen, King Viserys' Targaryen's older cousin and the wife of Lord Corollus of Valeron. Rhaenys is the only child of Prince Aemon Targaryen. King Jocerys, Targaryen, late heir parent and oldest son, and Jocelyn Baratheon, Jocerys' half-sister, known as the Queen Who Never Was, she was once a candidate to succeed her grandfather as ruler of the Seven Kingdoms, but was passed over in favour of a younger cousin, Viserys, due to her gender. She is a formidable dragon rider who rides the dragon, Meleasis, also known as the Red Queen. Olivia Cook as Queen or Dowager Queen Alison Hightower, Princess Rhaenyra's Targaryen's childhood friend and companion and best friend, later the second wife and queen consort of King Viserys. She is raised to the Red Keep as part of the king's inner circle and is known as the most comely woman in the Seven Kingdoms. Her supporters are the Greens, who conspire a coup to crown her eldest son Aegon as king. Emily Carey portrays young Lady Queen Alicent. And Fabian Frankel as Sir Christian Cole, a skilled swordsman from the Dornish Marches and a common-born son of the steward of the Lord of Blackhaven, who is handpicked by Princess Rhaenyra to become a member of King Viserys' King's Guard. He later places Sir Harold Westerling as the Lord Commander of the King's Guard following the ascension of King Aegon II of Targaryen. Now I found this to be an absolutely fantastic show, well written, beautifully acted and magnificently shot and produced. I'm happy to say it continued in the vein of the fantastic and groundbreaking Game of Thrones series, final season controversy aside. However, unlike the more expansive Game of Thrones, here we have a more focused story, much more dialogue and acting driven, and less reliant on the shock value and gore violence that Game of Thrones often turn to to make the viewer gasp and flinch in sheer amazement at what they just witnessed on screen. For me, House of the Dragon almost plays out perfectly like a medieval political history drama, it almost feels like you're watching a real history play out, rather that it's factual than fiction. In fact, the only sort of fantasy element of the show is when you see the dragons on screen. And for me, the show really plays off a very grounded premise. In saying that though, the use of CGI to create the dragons is absolutely astounding as they take your breath away, as they fly before your eyes. And each dragon is so well created and detailed and layered that they are fascinating each on their own. The cast are also on point here with some superb performances here, particularly from Paddy Constantine as the jaded and misguided King Viserys. Also Matt Smith, who plays the tempestuous and arrogant younger brother Damon, is just on point as he brings the enigmatic and misunderstood Damon to life. And what more can I say here about Rhys Evans as Sir Otto Hightower, another stellar performance here by the veteran Welsh actor. I did, however, find it quite jarring when suddenly Rhaenyra, played initially by Millie Alcock, and Emily Kerry, who played Alicent, suddenly age, of course, and are recast. It is a bit jarring at first because now suddenly they are played by two completely different actresses that don't really look much like the younger actresses. In saying that, though, Emma de Arcy and Olivia Cook are just so good in their roles that you soon accept the change and move forward with the story. It's just as strange, though, that they've chose to make this choice when some of the cast don't even age a day. For example, Sir Christian. The dialogue is rich and it is slowly placed but expertly done so that the show never drags or bores. Here we have a show entirely basically focused on one family and their pursuit of the power that the crown offers. This show exemplifies the court intrigue that distinguished its predecessor so well. I think one thing that stands out for me is that this show really relies more heavily on Martin's original novel than the later seasons of Game of Thrones did. Before the premiere, Martin himself stated that the series is similar to Shakespearean tragedy, with each character being morally grey, with no character everybody's going to love. And that sums it up though. This is a story with a sense of tragedy and benign reality. As is so often the case within real history, no character can be good or bad. They are people with many aspects to their personalities. The story is fascinating and the characters are layered and interesting, and the production leaves nothing to chance. Even the way episode 7 is filmed, in a much darker tone, where it left a lot of people wondering why they can't see or what's going to happen next, I feel is done purposely and done well. It creates anxiety and wonderment that is intended. And now for the true lovers of the Game of Thrones series, you will love the callbacks to, for example, seeing King's Landing, the references to Starks and the Tullys, and seeing Dragonstone again. Even hearing the familiar Game of Thrones theme tune play over the opening credits just gives you goosebumps. 
But this show, albeit having some shocking moments, relies much more on its fine acting and dialogue-driven scenes, rather than big battles full of violence and gore and blood. And for some fans of the original Game of Thrones series, they might find this a bit too slow and a bit too character-driven. But for me though, I absolutely loved the show. I loved its more focused feel and its wonderful story-driven character arc. I cannot wait to see where season 2 takes us as the story evolves into what will become more familiar Game of Thrones timeline. Fantastically written, beautifully acted and wonderfully produced. House of the Dragon season 1 gets a 9.5 out of 10.